Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be going over the mask modifier. And to do that, we are going to be making an actual mask. I'm going to teach you how to make the mask ball right here so you can see inside of your object really quickly. And then also how you can use it with armatures. So to get started, let's do File, New, and General. I am using Blender 2.91. And let's go ahead and save the project before we forget. So we'll do File, Save As, and we can just call it Mask. So let's go ahead and switch into Eevee mode just so it looks a little bit more better. And we're going to turn this monkey into a mask using the mask modifier. Let's go ahead and do it. So make sure you have your Suzanne highlighted. And let's go to our modifiers and add, you guessed it, the mask modifier. Dum -ba -da -da. Looky there. Now we've got a mask. Just kidding. So what we need to do is essentially tell Blender uh, which points or edges or vertexes we want to mask. So to do that, let's go into edit mode on our Suzanne and we can select the faces we want to mask. So I'm just going to mask out the front of her face. Let's go into see-through mode right here, or you can do Alt Z. That's the way I like to do it. And let's just box select the front of the face here. You know, whatever you want to turn into a mask. And if you want to, you know, deselect, I'm just toggle W, hold control, and just deselect you know, any of the faces that you don't want. So I'll do Alt Z. And maybe make sure these aren't selected. So just, you know, kind of eyeball it and look and see what kind of, uh, you know, faces you do or don't want in your mask. Maybe I don't want that one there. I don't want that one either. So I'm just control clicking to get those to go away. And I'm happy with those. So now we need to turn these selected faces into a vertex group because that's what the mask modifier is looking for. So an easy way to do that is just hit control G. What's happening behind the scenes is on this object properties, you can create a vertex group by hitting plus and assigning these faces. But an easier, quicker way to do it is just hover over your, your 3D viewport and hit control G and say, it'll say vertex group. Do you want to assign these? And we say, heck yeah, we do. Boom. Looky there. It did it for us. And so now we've got a vertex group. We can go into our modifier here and tell Blender which one we want. And just to be a little more specific, you can double click on this and call it like mask, uh, you know, group one. So just go ahead and click that. And then if we go to our modifier and we click on this, notice there it is, mask group one, boom. So now if we go back to object mode with tab, looky there, we've got our mask ready to go. And you can always flip flop this with this little, uh, these two arrows right here. So say if we wanted to just see the other one, we could quickly ping pong those. Um, oh, I just dropped it out, so I'll just bring it back. And you can also mess with the threshold. So one is just going to you know, take it back to normal, uh, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to leave it on zero and flip it back to the regular mask. One thing to know about the mask modifier is that if we go down and apply it or hit control A, we will lose everything that's not seen. So if we applied this, I will go ahead and do it. Apply. Notice if we go into edit mode, everything's gone. So be very careful. You know, if you want that to happen, that's what's going to happen. But I'm just going to undo that and bring back our modifier. So that's looking pretty good. So say if we wanted to remove some of the, uh, you know, some of the polygons from our vertex group. So say if we wanted to remove the eyes here, we could just go back into edit mode, go to your object data properties tab here. And with the selected, the, you know, your mask group, you can say select, and that will say, hey, Blender, show me what which ones are in the group. So here we go. And then we can say, okay, cool, that's nice. And then just select maybe, you know, hover over the eye, hit L, and hover over the other eye and hit L, and that will select everything linked with those. And what we can do is say, remove these selected faces from this mask group. So here we go, bloop. And now if we deselect everything with Alt-A, and hit select. Notice we just have the face selected and excluding the eyes just like we wanted. So if we hit tab, now we've got a real mask. So I'm pretty happy with that. Another cool thing you could do is uh, just add a solidify modifier, one of my favorites. Maybe make it like one millimeter thick. 
And looky there, you've got a little mask. So that could actually be 3D printable. You would just go into your 3D print toolbox, check all. Looks like we've got some intersecting faces and it's actually looking at the, the eyes here, but that's okay. So, and we've got non-flat faces. So we could, we could clean those up, bloop, check all. There we go. And then we need to tell Blender where we want the, the file and then hit export. And then we can bring in our Suzanne mask. And there we have it. Notice we did not have to apply the modifier. So the, you know, it's very non-destructive, uh, but we just kind of hid those uh, faces and made a quick mask with the mask tool. But that is just one way that we can use the mask tool. So let's go back into Blender and let me show you some more. So I'm just gonna call this flexible design, we'll call it monkey mask. And then we can just click right here and make a new collection. And notice that it's kind of hard to get that button. So what you can do is hover over this little bar and scroll your mouse wheel. And that will slide that back and forth like that. And so we'll hit new collection and just double click and call it mask ball. Cause we gonna make a mask ball. Let's go ahead and turn off our monkey mask collection and get to making a mask ball. So make sure you have your mask ball collection highlighted and then do shift A and make another monkey. It's gonna come in really tiny. So just crank it up, maybe like 50 is fine. And let's throw some color on Suzanne cause she's looking a little pale. And there we have her. So the way I like to use the mask modifier is to quickly see inside of my geometry because sometimes you're working on a design and you're just like, gosh, if I could just see inside the geometry. And yes, you could go into edit mode, select half of the face you know, like this, let's do it in x-ray mode, you know, select half of a face and then, you know, hit H and then I could see inside. But if I tab back into object mode, I can't, I can't see. So sometimes you want to be able to see inside of your object while your modifiers are on. So the mask modifier is a quick way to do that. So let me show you how to set up the mask ball. It's very awesome. Very cool. So first things first, Go into edit mode, select all, and I've kind of hid those, so I'll just hit Alt H and that will bring everything back. And then now that we have everything selected, we wanna turn this into a vertex group because remember, the mask modifier likes, or wants, I should say, vertex groups. So make sure you have everything selected, hit Control G and assign the new group. And let's go over here, look, there he is, and notice, it's, there's not two here because we are not on, you know, our first Suzanne here. If we had our, our first Suzanne highlighted right here, that's our mask group one because we have Suzanne selected in the monkey mask. Uh, but if we go here, notice it is a new vertex group because we are on a new design layer. So let's call this mask group two. Uh, and we don't have to rename this, um, you know, you could just leave it group, uh, but I want it just so it's kind of easier to see how this is all connecting. So we have our monkey selected and we need to do our new group. And so now everything is visible, right? Just how we want it. But what we need to do is just crank up the threshold, not all the way to one, but just slightly lower, just a little bit like 0.95, you know, something in that ballpark. And now we need to add a, almost like a controller device. So let's do shift A and we're gonna add an empty and instead of the plane axis like we usually do, let's do a sphere and make the radius pretty large, maybe like 25 millimeters, bloop. So now that will be our mask ball right here. And so if we go back to our Suzanne layer, we need to add another modifier that we're gonna go more in depth on, but just kind of just follow along here for fun today, just cause I wanna show you what you can do with the mask modifier. We're gonna use this one under the modify column called vertex weight proximity. So go ahead and click on that one and move it above your mask layer, very important. Otherwise it won't work. So make sure you have the vertex modifier up here and then the mask below. And we're gonna do the same thing. So the vertex group, we're gonna still do our monkey mask group number two and the target object is going to be our little monkey, our, our empty sphere that we created. So click on your monkey and the target object is our 
empty. This one right here, you can you could also use the little eyedropper and select that empty object. And notice it just disappeared. So what we need to do is change our proximity mode from object to geometry. That's looking better. This is our lowest distance weight. We can keep it zero and then type in for the highest, the size of your sphere. So remember we typed in 25 to get that. So we'll just type in 25. Hey, and there we go. And you can toggle on the normalized weights if you want. Doesn't really matter. Um, you can also play with the fall off and the influence if you want to, but you don't really have to. Um, so now if we grab this little empty, let's rename it and call it the mask ball because that's what it is. And we can hit G and looky there. We can just easily see inside of our object. So say if I'm like, oh, let's see, I want to look inside or better example. If I had, let's just move this out of the way for now. So, you know, you can just keep it over there to the side. And then if you need to look inside your object, you know, just bring it on in. Uh, but there are some times where you're inside the model and maybe you need to see the outside and the inside of the model at the same time or see what's going on to your model while you're in object mode and have a bunch of modifiers doing a bunch of crazy cool stuff. Uh, but when you go into edit mode, you know, all that could disappear. So the mask ball is your helper there. You can just turn it on, hit G, and be like, oh, let me take a look on the inside here. Okay, yeah, all this is looking good. Let me move it over here. That's looking good. All right, and that's just a quick, a quicker way to use the mask than to go into the object and, you know, select everything you want to hide. You know, it's just, just giving you some options here. So, you know, you may find the, the way that works best for you, uh, but the mask ball, I'm really enjoying. So I hope that someone out there is like, yes, this is very cool and very helpful. <laughs> but let's go ahead and move on to the next way or the third way you can use the mask modifier and that is with armatures. So let's turn off the mask ball collection and create a new collection and we'll call it armature. I'm just gonna twiddle this up. And then with your armature layer selected, make sure you have your 3D cursor in the center. You can just do shift S1 and that will pop it to the center and we'll do shift a to add another monkey and let's add some color to Suzanne here red or any color you want really so I've got a 50 millimeter Suzanne monkey head here and what we're gonna do is add some bones or armatures so that we can use the other part of the mask modifier the armature so we have been using vertex group but if you are into animation or posing your designs uh, then you can use it for the armature as well. Uh, it's not as common with 3D designer with 3D print designers, but if you are making objects that you know can move and bend, then this could help you. Similar to the vertex group, the armature is looking for an armature, and so we need to add that. Let's just turn off the modifier for a second so we can see what we're doing, and let's give Suzanne's like a long snake-like neck. So let's go into edit mode, maybe just highlight some of the faces here. I'm just hit three and just shift click some of these and then go to the side view. And let's use our funky little friend, the extrude to cursor and make just a fun little neck here and maybe scale that down. And let's go back to our selection tool. And there we go. So now we've got this weird uh, snake-like uh, monkey. I might even grab that and bring it up more, more like a banana. There we go. Maybe just straighten it up just a tad. There we go. So now we've got like a monkey banana neck going on, but we need to add an armature. So in object mode, with your 3D cursor still in the middle, you can do shift A and add an armature. There it is. It's like a little, almost like what you would uh, animate a body with. So we'll do armature. And with the visibility, you can go down and say in front. And let's crank up the radius Maybe pretty pretty high here, maybe like 25. You can kind of see it at, sticking out the top of her head there, but it's like this little bone. There we go. So if you hit viewport display in front on the object data properties um, under viewport display, you can check the in front box. And that way we can kind of see what we're doing here. So that is an armature, but we need to create some more that go down the body here. So to do that, we can just take the armature, make sure you have the armature selected, 
and go into tab for edit mode select that armature and then I'm gonna do side view um, just three on my numpad and then hit E and looky there we got another one and then just hit E it's kind of like the extrude so we're just extruding bones throughout this neck and there we go and now we can go back to object mode click on the Suzanne head and then shift click on the armature and do control P now we're going to set the bone parent to the armature deform with automatic weights and that's just a quick way to be able to pose our Suzanne um, it's just kind of doing it automatically and notice that our armature uh, our Suzanne has disappeared and that is because we parented them together and now Suzanne is inside of this armature so to mess with the armature we can go into pose mode and just grab one of these little guys here and hit R and looky there we can rotate the uh, the uh, the geometry around very fun uh, so you know have a second to play with that and then when you're done uh, we can go back into object mode right here and go to Suzanne and on our armature make sure we turn this mask tool back on and we can tell blender we want to use this armature here and so what this is going to do is any of the bones that we have selected in pose mode it will show or mask um, you know everything else except for the bone you have uh, that you're messing with so let's go to pose mode and if I click on different bones notice it's giving me it's hiding different parts of the mesh and this is pretty simple here so you wouldn't really necessarily need the mask for something like this but if you have a very complex character with clothes and you know just a bunch of stuff going on the mask modifier with the armature settings can help tremendously when trying to you know just really see what you're doing and what you're working with so that's the three different ways that you can use the mask tool so I'm gonna jump out and go back to object mode and just turn on our monkey mask and our monkey ball maybe just move these over here for a second we'll just hit G and X there's one and our monkey mask we'll hit G and X and for our Suzanne layer here we can just turn that mask off so again that is the different ways that you can use the mask modifier whether it's to use it to hide uh, you know certain parts of your object with the ball or to just hide them with the vertex group or to use them with armatures so hopefully that helped and gave you some ideas on how to use the mask modifier and let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson